what are some disturbing facts about space, that we, as a planet, are literally flying through space, I don't just mean around the sun. Because our solar system is flying through space as well, along with our galaxy too. Where Earth was one minute ago is a point in space, that we will never return to. Here's one closer to home. The Kessler effect is the theory that a single destructive event in low Earth orbit could create a cascade where satellites break up into tiny fragments taking out other satellites, breaking up into smaller fragments and so on, until the Earth is completely surrounded by a massive cloud of tiny flying death shrapnel which would make leaving this planet almost impossible. If you look up how much space debris there is already up there, and how many satellites currently orbit, Plus the continued growth of the commercial space industry, I think about it a lot. I once had a job, where I would track particular satellites. The system I used tracked all satellites as well as larger space debris. Even 20 years ago, there was an impressive, actually kind of distressing, amount of space junk up there. Space is really big, and there's lots of room up there. But even tiny flecks of paint can cause real damage, and cause more space junk. One of our fav pastimes while deployed, was to come up with inventive ways, to remove the debris. My idea was a satellite with a long magnetic tail that would attract space junk. My theory, as a non-engineer, was that once it collected enough junk it would become too heavy, and fall back to earth with most of the stuff burning up in the atmosphere. My buddy pointed out that, if we were depending on loss of inertia as a return method then there would be no control over where the unburnt parts would land. That, obviously, is bad. If you gathered together all the matter in the universe we can observe right now, and squished it together, until it had the density of water, 1 gm slash cm carat 3, it would fit into a cube about 1 light year on each side. There are several disturbing things about this. A single light year is almost unimaginably huge a cubic light year is a ridiculous volume of space the observable universe is 33 orders of magnitude larger than, that it is almost entirely empty. The farthest galaxy we can detect was 13.4 billion light years away when it emitted the light we see today. That light, not the galaxy, the light itself, is three times as old as the Earth. Its size and age alone is disturbing. I have had an ongoing existential crisis since I was a child when I realized just how small and vulnerable we are. Space is big, really big. You just won't believe how vastly hugely mind bigglingly big it is. I mean you may think it's a long way down the road to the chemists, but that's just peanuts. To space our glass atoms. The vast distances between solar systems and the near impossibility of interstellar human travel. This is why I'm not bothered by the Fermi paradox or any related questions as to why we've not been contacted by or discovered other life. I have no doubt that there's other intelligent life in the universe. I would even wager that intelligent life is likely abundant, but given the age of the universe and the profound vastness of it all, it makes perfect sense to me why such distance would limit contact and discovery not just for us, but for other life too. I think too often we imagine other life as being far ahead of us technologically, but even if that was the case I think the limits of travel are a huge hurdle and there just may not be a good solution for that in the long run. Rogue planets. Such objects have been ejected from the planetary system in which they were formed, or have never been gravitationally bound to any star or brown dwarf. If a rogue planet invade our solar system, things could go very wrong. In about 150 billion years, intergalactic transportation and communication beyond our local supercluster will be impossible. In about 2 trillion years, galaxies outside of our local supercluster are no longer detectable due to redshift. Assuming the universe keeps expanding, then the universe's final fate depends on whether or not protons decay. It has been observed that most astronauts can hear sound in the vacuum of space, all except those who are Hispanic. Scientists speculate that due to some genetic defect based on ethnicity, Hispanic astronauts simply aren't able to hear in space, but you know what they say, in space, no Jewan can hear you scream. The images you see, are galaxies not as they are, but as they were based on how many light years away they are. This is fine for anything within the thousands, but if we are talking millions or billions of light years away then there is a good chance that none of those stars you see even technically exist right now. 
On the bright side though, if we can figure out how to move faster than light then we could see our own planet with a good enough telescope as it was in the past, we could observe any outside historical event or even dinosaurs. I think it's pretty scary that nobody, alien species, has encountered us yet. There are a few theories about why this is, but the scariest one is this. It is possible there is an alien race that is obsessed with destroying intelligent worlds. Marvel stands. Think Galactus. Once an intelligent world starts kicking up enough dust, sending radio messages into space or exploring new galaxies, the alien race will notice them and destroy them. It's possible that we are so unadvanced that we don't even show up on the map for a world-beating race of aliens. To me just the fact that everything up there is doing its own thing right this very second. For example, take an exoplanet hundreds of light years from Earth. Right now on that exoplanet there is a breeze blowing, a volcano erupting, an ocean swirling. It's doing its thing, just as Earth does its thing, and it does it all completely indifferent to us being here. That we are looking at the past, when we are looking at outer space, because light only travels so fast. That galaxy you're looking at that's a billion light years away might not be there anymore. Also, there's this stuff called strange matter and it's inside neutron stars. People theorize that, if strange matter breaks out of the neutron star it can turn everything it comes to contact with into more strange matter. And by the fact scientists still have no clue what exactly is dark matter and dark energy. How easy it would be, to become completely and totally isolated out there, in space. Technology is the only thing keeping us alive, the only reason we don't freeze suffocate or starve. When something like a car breaks down we can call a tow truck, and get it repaired. In space, there's no such thing. Think about the Apollo 13 and everything, that went wrong there. Imagine the day when humans advanced to traveling deeper into space, with noteworthy landmarks being so far apart navigating without a computer would be almost impossible, even if you still had communication with Earth. Imagine not having communication, completely alone in the blackness of space, or even worse your engines die and you're just forced to sit hoping and praying that somewhere in the vast universe someone comes across you. That's scarier than any movie monster. If you were to bring a cat to space, it can't land point you are probably saying, of course it can't land, there is no gravity, but what I mean, is far more cruel, let me explain, there have been scientific studies performed that show, that cats dropped from a certain height, can't get their paws facing down, because it's too high, and they lose track of where their ground is, they have taken this a step further, and brought cats to the ice, they dropped them, and apart from the obvious, no gravity, they found something else also, the cats didn't just float around with their paws facing towards the earth or down, if you will, instead, the cats just continuously looked around, looking for the bottom, while at the same time shifting their body, to land where they thought down was, which also continuously changed. Space radiation is real and those who talk about Mars and moon colonization don't seem to take it into account. If we do get to those places to live, those that do, will have to build underground until structures that can protect against the radiation can be developed. People who go to and from Mars on the 9MO window, when the planets are closest together are going to be showing signs of radiation sickness by the end of their journey. That idea that aliens or other life outside of our solar system do not exist, is almost impossible. We are one of literally trillions of galaxies. If God is real, there's no way he just wasted all that space no pun intended for no reason. Also, literally anything can happen close to our solar system and completely change everything, or even wipe us out. We are not as safe as we think we are. It is a completely one-sided relationship over which we have no control. We, as an entire planet, represent zero threat to space. There is literally nothing bad we can do to it. However, at any moment, one of a zillion horrible things, most of which we can't even imagine, could completely wipe us out. And in the long run, we know that will happen eventually, no matter what we do. Even if we live out our sci-fi fantasies of someday finding a habitable world, by the time that happens any potential new home world will be so far away that our spacecraft would rot away before we ever got there. Space is infinite, and we have no hope to be.